The biggest Steam Deck update yet is here. How's it going everyone and welcome to Deck Ready, the channel all about the Steam Deck. Today I have a pretty awesome video for you because I finally got my Steam Deck back. I actually just recorded a whole video about the entire RMA process. I started it before I sent the Steam Deck off and I finished it when I got it back. But uh, today I've got something a little bit cooler because before I even use this thing, I want to upgrade the SSD while it's fresh. So I went ahead and I ordered a 2230 one terabyte SSD. So this is the PM991 and it's a 2230 drive like I just mentioned, but there's a ton of people on Reddit who have figured out that I'm pretty sure the PM991A, it, which is like a full sized NVMe drive, you can actually just cut off like the top half of it and make it the size of a 2230 drive and it will work. Now, those are a lot cheaper than the 2230 version as well. So people basically bought all of them off eBay. So I was like, well, I'm getting my Steam Deck back. I wanna put a one terabyte drive in it. I don't wanna wait for these to come back in stock. So I got the 2230 version and I figured I'd jump right in and uh, upgrade the SSD. I'm gonna run through this pretty quick because I've already made a very detailed tutorial here on the channel on how to upgrade the SSD. The first thing you're going to have to do is download the recovery image. It's on Steam's website. So if you get it from anywhere else, I would not use that. Then you're going to use Rufus if you're on Windows and make a bootable drive. So I just have this 64 gigabyte thumb drive here. I made it a bootable drive. It takes about five minutes minutes. It's a very simple process. And then after that, we've got to start taking apart the Steam Deck. So this is my fresh 256 gigabyte Steam Deck. Uh, it's a much better pull than the one that I sent in because they did actually give me a brand new one. The first thing you're going to want to do though, uh, that I think is worth mentioning, take out the micro SD card if you have it in there, because when you take off the back of the Steam Deck, you can actually snap your micro SD in half. Now I've already set this one up with my Steam account to make sure it works and everything. I have not installed anything to the actual SSD in here because I'm replacing it. So I'm just gonna make sure this thing shut off. And then once it's shut off, you're pretty much ready to go with uh, taking it apart, which is the scariest part. So I'm using my iFixit kit here. I have my Phillips head screwdriver because thankfully Valve made it so that the Phillips head is all you need to do this entire process. And all of the screws are basically the same size, which makes it even better. So as you can see, all you really have to worry about here on the back is these eight screws. So you've got two here, two here, two here, and two here. We're just gonna go all the way around, start unscrewing these. So I'm turning this vertically just for this screw. I might have to do it for a couple more just because this screw is a little hard to get at and I don't wanna strip it like I have done before with my Nintendo Switch. This is the double zero size head if you're using an iFixit kit as well. Um, okay, and then the iFixit kit, the cool thing about them is the top, like the lid, has a tray that's divided into a grid so you can keep track of what screws go where. Now it's kind of tricky because you don't wanna put too much pressure on the thumbsticks because you don't want those like jammed in to the actual Steam Deck. Like I wouldn't put too much pressure on this anywhere if you can avoid it. So that's why you can hear the screwdriver kind of clicking a little bit, like it's coming out of the threads. I'm not putting that much pressure on it at all because again, I do not want to strip the screws. All right, and we've got all the screws out. Hopefully, hopefully this is the last time I have to open up this Steam Deck because I don't know, I feel like if I had to do all those screws again, they might be a little bit harder to get out. So now that all eight screws are out, we have to break the seal here on the back of the Steam Deck. Now I don't, now I really don't wanna scratch this thing, so the way to do it is to come at it from the, the bumper area. So once you've got it wedged in there, like you've already got it coming off a little bit, this might be a little hard to see, you just use the guitar pick to kind of pop all the little clasps all the way down. That'll stop it from like scratching the plastic because like it's plastic on plastic, it might not scratch it. I just don't like risking it because I know for a fact, if I put this thing back together and I see a deep gash or scratch, I'm gonna know about it and every time I pick this thing up, I'm gonna think about it. So then the next step you wanna do is you gotta break the seal on the side here. So you just wanna get the little tool in there if you can. And then same thing, just work your way down. So while I use the guitar pick on the top, I'm just sticking with the uh, pry tool here for the sides, just being extra careful with it. Once you start breaking the seals on the bottom, that's when it really becomes a lot easier. It sounds way worse than it actually is because it just comes right off. And then I'm gonna put that over there. 
All right, so now we are inside the Steam Deck. It looks exactly as I remember. I've opened these things up a couple times and now it's actually pretty easy. There's just a few things you're going to want to keep track of. So on the outside here, we've got to remove this shield, this like aluminum shield, and we have three total screws on it. One here, one here at the top, and one underneath this tape, which is some sort of metal. I'm gonna assume aluminum, probably. So I'm just gonna start here in the bottom left. Still starting with the double zero size screwdriver, and yeah, these screws are also a little bit tighter. So again, be very careful that you don't strip them because that would be a bad day. These screws are super tight compared to the other Steam Decks I've taken apart. So what I ended up doing, because I could tell they were about to strip, is I used a small flathead screwdriver instead of the Phillips head just to get a little more grip and that ultimately is what got it for me. So if you feel like you're about to start stripping it, I would use the flathead. The size that I'm using here is the 1.5 flathead screwdriver, just so you know. There's a tip so you don't have the sweat on your brow that I have now, because whoo, that was scary. All right, so now that we have this shield unscrewed here, it just, it has adhesive under it, but it should just come right off like that. And then now we have the Steam Deck opened up. And as you can see right here, here is the 256 gigabyte uh, SSD that I'm going to be replacing with a one terabyte one. But the most important next step is you have, have, have to unplug the battery. SSDs are not hot swappable. I have seen so many people on the Reddit saying that they did this without unplugging the battery and they smelled a burning smell and their Steam Deck was done. So if you don't wanna wait for a two to three week RMA process like I had to, do not do this without unplugging the battery. So it looks like a little tough, right? But you can actually get your fingernail on, on the little edge of the battery clip. And then once you get it out a little bit, you can pull up this little ribbon cable and then use that to get it out the rest of the way. So you're not gonna disrupt anything or break anything. So you'll see here that it's out, it's not connected anymore, we're good. The last thing I'm gonna recommend you do after the battery is unplugged is just hold the power button for a few seconds to get any extra juice that might be left over on the actual device out of it so there's no electrical charge flowing through it. And then once you've done that, you're now ready to replace the SSD. So I'm gonna stick with this flathead screwdriver just because I've had such bad luck with these screws almost stripping. And this one, okay, this one's coming up so much easier. That's good. What you're going to do is you're gonna unscrew the screw that's holding in the SSD. Keep track of that, because it's the same size as the one that was underneath the shield. Then this SSD will pop up. It has a little bit of adhesive on it. Just very gently take it out. And do not lose this tape, this magnetic shield tape. You need it because it has to be put on the new SSD. So I'm gonna take the new SSD out of its protective packaging. I've got it right here. It says PM991 NVMe, one terabyte. So, so after that, just slip it into this little tape and then you're going to wanna pop it in. There's really only one way you can push it in because of the gap in the chip. So it's really actually pretty tough to screw this up. But yeah, you just wanna very gently make sure it's in. You won't see any of the pins if it's in right. Then you just hold it down. Then you gently screw in the drive until it's just a little tight, like not too tight. So you're like feeling pressure on the drive connected to the motherboard. Uh, it's just like, you'll, you'll know, you just feel it out. Don't do super tight. That's the, that's the point here. And then once that's on, the drive is ready to go. So before we put this shield on, we're gonna reconnect the battery, which just like how we took it out, then gently use the pry tool to slide it back in, and if it's connected, you'll see the light of the power button flash for a second. It'll scare you, you'll think the thing's turning on, it is not turning on. After we have that done, now we have to put this shield back on, which there's only one way you can actually do this, so pretty hard to screw up, thankfully. Okay, so we now have the SSD replaced, this magnetic shield replaced, and now we're gonna put the Steam Deck back together. It should just pop on pretty easily because everything, you know, is a pretty snug fit. You'll hear everything snapping together, nice and loud, letting you know you did everything right. And before I screw in these screws, I wanna make sure I did everything right because having to undo it again would suck. And now we're gonna take the boot drive I made before this process, we're gonna plug it into the USB-C port, and then we're gonna power this baby on and hold the minus button while we do it. So you press the power button, you'll hear the little beep. Keep holding the minus button until you get to this boot manager, and then you'll see EFI USB device SanDisk. That is the drive I made before I started this process. Thankfully, it seems like, fingers crossed, my Steam Deck still works. 
So now that we're in the recovery menu here, I'm gonna use the trackpad to head over to re-image Steam Deck just because this is a brand new SSD. And then you use the right trigger to click on it. And then it says, this action will re-image the Steam Deck. This will destroy all the data and install Steam OS. That is what we want. And when I started this video, this drive still had the recovery image on it, but I decided to redo everything in case they have updated the recovery image since I did it about three months ago at this point. All right, that took even less time than it did the last time I did this, I'm pretty sure. So now it says re-image and complete. Choose proceed to reboot the Steam Deck now. That's what we want to do. All right, so I fully updated and logged into my Steam Deck and it looks like everything worked. And yep, it says right there, internal drive, 934 gigabytes free of 938. I now have a one terabyte Steam Deck. And now I'm gonna pop in my one terabyte SD card and there it is. So you can see internally I have 938 gigs and on the SD card I have 937.5. So yeah, this Steam Deck now has two terabytes of storage and I've got a whole extra terabyte to fill up with emulated games, Epic Game Store games, you know, all the stuff that stays on your internal storage. So this was a pretty easy process. The next step for me is to get these screws back in, but now let's just go over the new software update that finally dropped because it brought some really cool features. So just going home, the coolest thing that this software update brought is being able to switch the refresh rate of the screen. So if you press the three dots button, you can head over to the performance menu and now you'll see this refresh rate slider. So you can set it all the way down to 40 hertz. And then if you let go, the screen will switch to 40 hertz. And then the slider here that says frame rate limit, it changes from 15, 30, and 60 to 10, 20, and 40. Now I've talked about this a few times in videos before, but the reason you want 40 hertz versus 30 is a lot of games have trouble running at 60 frames per second, especially at native resolution on the Steam Deck, but they have no trouble running at all at around 40 or 50 hertz. So if you lock the screen at 40 hertz, it feels so much smoother. I'm a very sensitive person to frame rates, and to me, if feels almost identical to playing at 60 frames per second. The game I've been playing the most at 40 hertz is uh, Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown, but they just announced Jedi Survivor, the sequel to Jedi Fallen Order. So I feel like I'm due for probably my fifth playthrough of this game. I'm gonna try that out at 40 hertz. I feel like it'll have no trouble running at all. Another great feature that came along with this update is an improved fan curve. I know a ton of people were talking about how when they were playing emulated games like Super Metro, Super Mario 64, even at their normal resolutions, or even bumped up to 720p, aka I think four times resolution, it would juice the fan to like max speeds and it would get super annoying because you could tell the Steam Deck wasn't really being taxed enough to need that faster fan speed. So Valve has been adjusting the fan curve and made it so yes, your Steam Deck will run a little bit hotter than it used to before. The fan won't kick into full gear or overdrive until you get to a certain heat threshold. And from my experience, this new fan curve curve is great. I got to mess around with it a little bit on my Steam Deck that had the louder fan before, and it was like an extremely immediately noticeable improvement. And then finally, the surprise feature that came along that I never even saw in the beta was remote play together. So the way Valve describes this is this feature actually isn't part of Steam OS 3.2's update. It's part of a Steam client update, but it's a big deal. And it's also something we ship today. Remote play together is a feature that allows a friend to join your game remotely as if they're sitting on the couch next to you it is now completely functional on the Steam Deck. This includes both hosting and joining remote play together sessions. Try out a supported game and open the quick access menu to get started. 